Objective 8.1. Describe the need to transport substances into and out of a range of organisms including oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, dissolved food molecules, mineral ions and urea. Objective 8.2. Explain the need for exchange surfaces and a transport system in multicellular organisms including the calculation of surface area to volume ratio. Now your body has trillions of chemical reactions happening inside the cells all the time. This is what we call your metabolism. Now these metabolic reactions need some substances to work and also produce certain wastes that you need to get rid of. Cells are going to need things like oxygen and glucose to carry out aerobic respiration. They're going to need amino acids to make more proteins and sugars for energy. They'll also need water, but they're going to make waste as well, things like carbon dioxide and urea from these metabolic reactions. And they may also produce things like hormones or enzymes that need secreting from the cell. So molecules need to move in and molecules need to move out of cells. Now many of these substances move by diffusion from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Water moves by osmosis and active transport can be used if a substance is needed to be moved against a concentration gradient, but that is going to require energy. Now some organisms are made of just one cell and these are what we call unicellular organisms. They have no need for lungs or gills, they can just obtain the oxygen they need by diffusion through their cell membrane. This also means they do not need a transport system. This is because they have what we call a large surface area to volume ratio. Multicellular organisms, on the other hand, need an exchange surface because they need to get enough oxygen into their bodies quick enough and then they need a, a transport system to then send it around all their cells fast enough and they have a much higher demand for oxygen because they're, they're more active. Now this all comes down to something called surface area to volume ratio, a mathematical concept. These cubes here represent organisms of different size. As you can see, the small cube representing a small organism has a surface area of six because it's got sides that are one by one centimeter. So the surface area of one side is one and there's six sides, so it's six. That's the surface area for the whole cube. And it has a volume of one because it's one times one times one to get your volume to so the surface area to volume ratio is six divided by one, which is six. The larger cube though, is actually only three times bigger in terms of the sides. So a side length of three. So one uh, surface of the cube is nine, three times three, which is nine, and there's six sides, which is 54. So the surface area is 54. The volume is three times three times three, which is 27. So it has a surface area to volume ratio of two. So the surface area to volume ratio has got a lot smaller, even though the cube has only got a little bit bigger. And this is what happens as organisms get bigger. Their surface area is smaller compared with their volume, and therefore diffusion just is not gonna be fast enough. Therefore, you'll find in biology that organisms that rely on diffusion will tend to have a large surface area. It could be in the alveoli, in the lungs of mammals. It could be root hairs on the, the roots of plants. These increase surface area to make transport across that surface much quicker.